98% of Saudi Arabia's land is nothing but sand. But in the middle of this seemingly uninhabitable desert, they are creating their own rivers, massive streams of water drawn straight from the ocean, crossing scorching deserts and climbing mountains over 3,900 feet high, stretching 3,000 kilometers through underground pipes. Thousands of pumping stations run 24-7, supplying 7 million cubic meters of water every single day to sustain millions of people. Did you know Saudi Arabia is one of only 18 countries in the world without a single natural river? Yes, no rivers, no lakes. The high plateau terrain blocks moisture from the sea, so rain clouds can't reach inland. On top of that, the climate is so dry and harsh that temperatures often hit 122 degrees. Each person only gets less than 100 cubic meters of water per year, 60 times less than what Americans get. The difference is staggering, and as we all know, Humans can survive up to three weeks without food, but only two to seven days without water. That's why in Saudi Arabia, water is always a matter of life and death. To survive, they had to dig deep into the desert, searching for ancient fossil aquifers that took thousands of years to form. Since the 1980s, thousands of wells have been drilled, pumping up trillions of gallons. But that joy soon turned into a challenge as the harsh truth became clear. Fossil groundwater can't be replaced just like oil from a depleting well. In just 25 years, water levels in major aquifers dropped by nearly 500 feet, forcing Saudi Arabia to cut consumption, install smart meters, and replace thirsty wheat fields with drip irrigation, making every drop as precious as gold. But saving water only bought them time. Just as America can't simply save gas without developing new energy sources, Saudi Arabia realized they needed a massive, sustainable supply. And the only source around them is seawater, which makes up 97% of the world's water, but is salty and undrinkable. Early experiments began in the 1970s, but it wasn't until the early 21st century that tens of billions of dollars in investment turned this plan into real power. By 2024, Saudi Arabia operates 41 desalination plants along the Red Sea and Persian Gulf, producing around 3 billion gallons of fresh water daily, 22% of the world's total desalination output. To put that in perspective, the entire United States desalination system combined is less than one-fifth of this, even though America's coastline is much longer. At the heart of this network is the Ras al Khair mega complex on the Persian Gulf. This plant alone produces over 1 million cubic meters of fresh water daily, enough for nearly 2 million American households, and generates 2,400 megawatts of electricity, equivalent to two medium-sized nuclear reactors. After building this huge desalination network, Saudi Arabia faced an even trickier challenge. How to turn salty water into fresh water with less electricity, fewer emissions, while demand keeps rising. The race centers on two core technologies. First is multi-stage distillation, massive plants where seawater is heated nearly to boiling, then pass through chambers with decreasing pressure to flash evaporate at lower temperatures. That vapor is condensed into pure fresh water. The big advantage is durability, 20 to 25 years, and even leftover steam is reused to spin turbines, offsetting some energy costs. In contrast, there's reverse osmosis, a rapidly advancing technology. Reverse osmosis forces seawater through ultra-thin polymer membranes, just a few millionths of an inch thick. The pores are so tiny that even viruses can't pass, filtering out up to 99% of salt and minerals. The most impressive part is energy efficiency. Thanks to pressure recovery devices, modern reverse osmosis plants use only about 3 kilowatt hours for every 264 gallons, about the same power it takes to light 10 LED bulbs for an hour. Compared to multi-stage flash, which once consumed nearly 9% of the nation's electricity, the difference is staggering. This huge gap in energy costs led Saudi Arabia to switch its entire desalination system to reverse osmosis, while also integrating renewable energy to cut emissions. But aside from the water purification process, have you ever wondered what happens to the salt after seawater is filtered? For every liter of pure water produced, up to 1.5 liters of concentrated brine is dumped back into the sea. In the Red Sea, where many plants are located, dead coral zones and disappearing fish have already been observed. Experts call this the hidden cost of desalination. If discharged directly, the waste raises both temperature and salinity, threatening the entire coastal ecosystem. To prevent disaster, Saudi Arabia is testing deep-sea multi-port diffusers, offshore dispersion technology, and even brine mining to extract salt, magnesium, potassium, and rare metals. 
turning waste into resources. After solving desalination, Saudi Arabia faced an even bigger challenge. How do you get billions of gallons of clean water across the desert, up mountains nearly 4,000 feet high, and into every city and village? The pressure is even greater as the population explodes. Riyadh had 5.2 million people in 2010, over 7.8 million by 2024, and is projected to hit 9 million by 2035. To solve this, Saudi Arabia chose enclosed underground pipelines instead of open canals. Pipes require less digging, are faster to build, reduce evaporation under the 120 Saudi Gassar sun, and keep out sand and contaminants. The result is the National Water Carrier Project, a 3,000-kilometer underground pipeline network, longer than the entire U.S.-Mexico border. Here's the vision. Five massive desalination superhubs on the Gulf and Red Sea coasts, each producing 1.4 million cubic meters of water daily, enough to supply a city the size of Philadelphia per plant. Together, they'll generate 7 million cubic meters every 24 hours, 2.5 billion cubic meters yearly. From these coastal giants, water flows through enormous concrete and steel pipelines, 2 to 4 meters in diameter, wide enough to fit a car, buried 5 to 10 meters underground. The network runs through Riyadh, then northwest to Qasim and Ha'il provinces, areas sitting above depleted aquifers that need revival. The engineering challenges are staggering. Water must travel 3,000 kilometers and climb 1,200 meters in elevation. To make this happen, engineers are installing over 50 massive pumping stations, maintaining constant pressure across the entire network. The decision to go underground was strategic brilliance. Surface canals would lose 30% of water to evaporation in Saudi Arabia's blistering heat. Underground pipes eliminate evaporation losses, protect from sabotage, and free up surface land. Smart monitoring elevates this from impressive to revolutionary. AI-powered sensors every five kilometers detect leaks, pressure changes, and water quality issues in real time. The system can identify a crack forming and dispatch repair crews before a single drop is wasted. And there's redundancy built into every kilometer. Parallel pipelines run alongside primary channels. If one fails, others maintain 60% capacity, ensuring water keeps flowing even during emergencies. For scale comparison, this network could equal seven times the California State Water Project, one of America's greatest infrastructure achievements. Moving 7 million cubic meters daily across 3,000 kilometers requires mind-bending energy. We're talking 15 gigawatts just for desalination and pumping, equivalent to 15 nuclear reactors running continuously. Saudi Arabia's answer? Build the world's largest renewable energy infrastructure alongside the water system. Plans call for 5,000 square kilometers of solar farms and massive wind installations along both coasts, an area larger than Rhode Island, dedicated solely to powering the water network. The renewable energy infrastructure alone costs $40 billion, but it's necessary to ensure economic sustainability. Engineers are constructing over 20 underground and surface reservoirs, each holding 100 to 500 million cubic meters. These function as massive batteries, buffering demand spikes and providing emergency supply. Every 500 kilometers, treatment facilities purify water, removing minerals and adjusting pH for agricultural use. Different crops need different water chemistry, and the system is designed to customize output for specific regions. Over 400 access tunnels provide entry points for repairs, and automated robot inspection systems crawl through pipes, identifying issues before they become failures. Total project cost? Official figures say $50 to $80 billion. Independent analysts estimate it could exceed $100 billion. Either way, it's one of the most expensive infrastructure projects in human history. Imagine the possibilities if this succeeds. The national water carrier could transform Saudi Arabia from food importer to agricultural powerhouse. The vision includes cultivating 3 million hectares, an area the size of Belgium, producing 70% of domestic food needs. That's 20 million tons of crops yearly. The $30 billion currently spent on food imports could be redirected into the domestic economy. The economic multiplier effects are enormous. Agriculture and related industries could add over $100 billion to GDP. The project would create 500,000 direct jobs in farming, water management, and maintenance, plus a million indirect jobs. Beyond agriculture, the water network enables Vision, 2030's ambitious new cities, Neom, The Line, and Kidia, together require three to five million cubic meters daily. 
impossible without this infrastructure. Population distribution could fundamentally shift. Right now, most Saudis crowd coastal cities because that's where water is. A functioning interior network would make central and northern regions livable, reversing overcrowding and spreading opportunity. When the land-based desalination network approached capacity limits, Saudi Arabia realized it needed additional flexibility. In 2022, together with private partners, they launched the first three floating desalination stations, each a mobile desalination plant installed on giant barges anchored off the Red Sea coast. These modular stations can add more vessels to boost capacity anytime and move flexibly along the shore. Each floating station can produce up to 50,000 cubic meters of fresh water daily, enough for almost 150,000 American households. Unlike fixed concrete plants that take years to build, this model is extremely agile. A giant ship docks and millions of gallons of clean water are ready to flow into storage tanks and join the national network. When a region no longer needs emergency supply, the floating station simply lifts anchor and moves to another coastal area in need. This is a long-term strategic move. The barges are designed to integrate with renewable energy like solar and offshore wind, helping Saudi Arabia move towards sustainability targets. Thanks to energy-saving desalination and increasingly green operations with modular design, they can easily expand the fleet, creating a mobile river along the coast to supplement the massive land-based pipeline network. The significance of this fleet goes far beyond just supplying clean water. It brings water to remote areas without pipelines, creates thousands of high-tech jobs, and most importantly, proves that Saudi Arabia isn't just solving today's water crisis. It's shaping the future of the global water industry. Phase 1, connecting the Gulf Coast to Riyadh, approximately 500 kilometers inland, began construction in 2021. Two major desalination plants are operational at Ras al Khair and Jubail, producing 1.5 million cubic meters daily. Pipeline installation continues with hundreds of kilometers already underground and connected to pumping. Stations. International involvement is substantial. China State Construction Engineering Corporation secured contracts for pipeline construction. South Korea's Doosan Heavy Industries supplies desalination equipment. Germany's Siemens provides smart grid and pumping technology. What's remarkable is that what Saudi Arabia is doing doesn't stop at its borders. Desalination technology and this pipeline river network could be a global solution to the water crisis. Imagine arid regions like Africa's Sahel, South America's Atacama Desert, or even drought-stricken California. All could use similar models to turn seawater into fresh water and pump it hundreds of miles inland. If coastal countries work together, floating desalination fleets and pipeline rivers could become a global network, bringing clean water to hundreds of millions. So, what do you think? Could this technology help solve water challenges around the world? Will we one day see similar artificial rivers in other continents, bringing fresh water to places that desperately need it? Leave a comment below and share your thoughts so we can discuss together. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss more incredible and surprising stories about how humans are using technology and engineering to overcome nature's challenges and create solutions for the future.